First question, uh, the removal of the feasibility study from the EPBD requirements seems to imply that low energy buildings should be considered feasible a priori. But how is a building owner to decide on the extent uh, and depth of the energy investment in their building? So one can imagine that the removal of the feasibility study from the PBD requirements uh, is probably linked to the requirements that uh, all new and re renovated buildings have to be uh, nearly zero, in zero energy buildings uh, by the end of 2020. So uh, of course the feasibility study of the use of high efficiency or energy systems is less useful uh, for nearly zero energy building. Uh, how is a building owner to decide on the extent depth of the energy investment in their building? Of course, they will have to uh, make or to, to, to order a study to decide about it. So uh, it is not because the feasibility study uh, is no more mandatory that uh, in, in a lot of cases a feasibility study uh, will, will remain necessary. Uh, even if it's not no more covered by a, a requirement of the EPBD. Okay, so the, the requirement is actually for the performance of the building, and then, then of course, a study is, is needed in order to see how this can be best achieved uh, optimally, etc. Okay, I think this is clear. Uh, then, is the typical energy use considered higher or lower than the typical energy needs? I think that has to do with the change in the terminology used. Yes, yes. So the annex to the current APBD is speaking about energy needs. I think it's better to, it's more correct to speak about the energy use because the energy use, of course, is higher than the needs in most cases because uh, the energy needs are the only the, the energy needed to uh, to ensure the comfort of the occupant. Uh, in the energy use, you have also some energy losses. Uh, for example, the energy lost by uh, uh, the uh, flue gases uh, from uh, from a boiler. Uh, they use energy, but they do not uh, contribute to uh, satisfy the, the needs. So, but anyway, I'm not sure about this interpretation. Uh, I think it's better that the word use uh, is used uh, instead of needs. Um, it makes things more clear anyway. Yes, in practice, the energy consumed is the energy used. So what, what, whatever the needs are. Uh, yes, and, 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 and to convert it into, into primary energy, you look at the final energy consumption, which is the energy used, uh, and you uh, use a factor to convert it into primary energy. Uh, the, the next question, I can read it, Alexander. Does a smartness indicator imply a trend towards more centralized or more distributed independent systems? One would assume that local control may be more comfortable for the user, but more functionalized control can better contribute to optimal conception. Of course, uh, the, your, your, your statement uh, is right, but does the smartness indicator imply a trend towards more centralized or more distributed independent systems? I think it's too early to be able to understand to, this, to, to reply to this question. Uh, we, uh, you have seen the, the words that describe the smartness indicator in the proposal from the European Commission. Uh, there are no much indication about this. And so, personally, I think it's too early to understand in detail if the smartness indicator will, uh, will help to go towards more centralized or more uh, distributed systems. Probably it will be a combination of, uh, of both, uh, part of uh, functions or systems that are centralized and part of function of systems that are uh, distributed, decentralized. So sorry, I'm, I'm not really able to, to decide on uh, one or other of these two options.
And, and the, the answer to this question is that difficult until the smartness indicator is not uh, more clearly defined. Okay, that, that is fine. Um, so, last question uh, for the moment, at least. Uh, this this one just arrived. I'm not sure that I understood well whether the smartest indicator only refers to the digitalization of the energy system or to its sustainability share of renewable energy sources and energy efficiency. I think it's mainly about the digit what you call the digitalization of the energy system. Uh, but of course, the idea is that this digitalization uh, should have an impact of the energy efficiency, and so probably also on the share of renewable energy sources and, and on the sustainability or the or reduce the environmental impact of the building. But uh, I see the digitalization of the energy system as the first uh, uh, objective of the smartness indicator. And uh, the, the other point of the question, sustainability, share of rest and energy efficiency as a consequence of the, the smartness indicator. But once again, uh, it's very difficult to uh, answer to this question until we don't know uh, what could be the definition and the way to use this uh, smartness indicator. So we have to wait uh, so that the, the Open Commission uh, provides more information about uh, what could be this indicator and when it will be defined and published uh, in a delegated act or in a regulation. Then uh, the answer to this question will, will be more easy even if with only a definition, maybe some questions will be still difficult to to, to answer uh, because uh, the real answer will be the, the 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 answer to the market or to the product offer to this uh, smartness indicator. Okay, very good. Um, I see no no more questions, uh, so we would uh, close the webinar here. Unless uh, Francois or Susanna, you have yourself any comments uh, in in uh, this uh, discussion in the, in the presentation. No, no. Thank thank you for attending this webinar and for the the interesting questions, and uh, thank you for Suzanne for for our presentation. Thank you. Thank Martin. you very much. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Francois. Thanks to everybody who attended. Uh, I didn't mention at the start, but for all QualiCheck uh, webinars, they are put uh, on the QualiCheck website, uh, full recordings plus uh, PDFs of the presentations in a couple of weeks after the webinar. So by the end of next week, uh, you should expect uh, this webinar and also the one from yesterday to appear on the website. So thank you very much for your presence today, and we'll close the webinar here. Thank you and bye. Bye.